Over the holiday break, I became sort of accidentally obsessed with shooters. Not the modern variety of first-person shooters, but in the classic sense, the shooting game, the STG, the shoot 'em up or the shmup. It started with a YouTube video that I was only half watching when Chicago Soul Eater appeared on the screen and just, it demanded my attention. The combination of bullet hell and Korean mythology just looks so rad. So I ordered it, I played it, and I got hooked. You start off by choosing between two main characters, the Grim Reaper and the girl. Then you go off to fight some horrific beasts who love to start off a bit titillating and then transform into something truly monstrous. Graphically, the game has its shortcomings with some pretty low res textures used for backgrounds and not a ton of enemy variety. And the soundtrack just kind of felt different tonally than the rest of the presentation. But the bullet hell gameplay had an unblinking intensity to it that just transfixed me. From the moment the first level began, I needed 100% concentration, a risk being enveloped by waves of enemy bullets. But that got me thinking. I haven't played shooters since like the early 90s. Is there anything new out there? Yeah, there's a lot of new stuff out there and I'm gonna show you about 20 games right now. Let's start off with the Nintendo Switch. Rolling Gunner Overpower is a side-scrolling bullet hell with a unique twist. A rolling gun that the player can control to fire in any direction. It can be controlled by either the right thumbstick on a controller or with an arcade stick by using a lock and release system where the gun sort of follows your ship around when released and then you can lock it back in place. The game, of course, is built around this with swarms of enemies that attack you from all sides. If you choose the overpower mode, your gun shoots a massive burst that cancels enemy bullets and can kind of provide you a path forward out of trouble. This game is intense, beautiful, and a ton of fun. This one is available on the eShop, but at the time of this video, there does not appear to be a North American version released physically. Esperada Sai is the first game on this list that comes from a team up between the developer Cave, who initially released the game to arcades in 1998, and M2 Shot Triggers, who remastered the game for the Nintendo Switch. A vertically scrolling bullet hell, this one can be played in tape mode by just flipping the switch on its side. Instead of piloting jets, Esperada Sai has the player controlling psychic teens who shoot magic out of their hands and teddy bears. It all feels heavily inspired by Japanese cartoons like Ghost in a Shell and Akira. Each character has a main attack and a special, more focused attack used to take out targets fast. A guard barrier can also be used to absorb enemy bullets and unleash a super attack. The music in this one is catchy and the levels have unique settings like a shopping mall and a high school that makes this one just kind of feel different from the rest. Sadly, this one has not gotten an English release yet, but import copies can be found pretty easily for the Switch or the PS4. You may need the help of Google Translate to get through some of the menus though. I highly recommend this one. It's quickly become one of my favorites. Andro Dunos 2 is a bit of an odd duck as it's a sequel to a Neo Geo game that was released in 1992. Andro Dunos 2 keeps the pixel art aesthetic and the 4x3 display to form a somewhat charming presentation that quickly won me over. Your ship has four weapons at its disposal that can be cycled through at will and upgraded between levels if you collect enough blue orbs. You can also use a power shot on any of the weapons, but that weapon will become weaker for a time after the power up is used. Because of the big bright graphics, Andros Dunos 2 is one of my favorites to play in handheld mode on the Switch. Mushihima Samba was released by Cave to arcades in 2004, but this is a port of the Xbox 360 version released almost a decade later. You pilot Princess Rico against an invading army of bugs and their massive swarms of pink bullets. 
There are three different shot patterns that Rico can use, but you can only choose one at the beginning of the game. You also have access to a screen clearing bomb to get you out of tight spots. This game seemed daunting at first, but the princess has a small hitbox that helps her maneuver about between the bullets with practice. When you Google image search bullet hell, screenshots of this game will pop up often with screens just covered in pink enemy fire. But don't let that keep you away. At lower difficulties, this game can be enjoyed by beginners like me too. Darius Cosmic Revelation is a collection of three games, including Sagaya, a Game Boy game that, frankly, it just didn't grab my interest, and I won't be talking about much. Darius HD and Darius Burst Another Chronicle EX Plus, which certainly did grab my attention. Darius HD is an early polygonal take on Darius, and this release has both the original Darius G and a new higher res version for modern eyes. The main gimmick, aside from all the bosses are huge robotic fish, is the player's ability to grapple enemy ships and use them as options to add firepower and protection to the player's ship. The game has branching paths selected at the end of each level for replayability. Darius Burst Another Chronicle EX was originally released in arcades with two side-by-side 16x9 monitors, so the display for the Switch version looks extremely wide with its black bars on the top and bottom. Sadly, there's no way to play this on two monitors, the Switch just doesn't have that hardware, but I have heard the PC version can display in the arcade's 32 by 9 aspect ratio if you put two 16x9 monitors together. Still, even on a normal screen, this extremely long play field adds a different feel to the game. The developer said that instead of a bullet hell game, they wanted to try and make an enemy hell game, and you can definitely see what they meant when playing this one. Massive formations of enemies will swirl and twist on the screen as you're trying to take them out before they overwhelm your ship. In combination with the ultra-wide aspect ratio, it really does have a spectacular effect. In handheld mode, however, it can be hard to see what's going on on the Switch's small screen, so for me, Darius Burst ACEX is strictly one to play in the dock mode. Death Smiles is another cave classic. This time the player takes control of one of four young girls who must fight through this Halloween inspired side scrolling shooter. The girls can each fire to the left or to the right and have bombs and special moves unique to each character. Death Smiles is a great looking game with hand drawn art, tons of quirky enemies and amazing backgrounds. It's also somewhat easier than most other cave games, making it a great entry point into the genre. This Mouse 2 is not looked at as fondly as the first game by shooter fans, perhaps due to its change from sprite based to polygonal graphics. It introduces new characters to fight with and a new antagonist, Satan Claus, along with a full on Christmas theme throughout. Really though, it's the combination of these two games in one beginner-friendly package that makes this offering so compelling. Moving on to the PlayStation 4 and Raiden 5 Director's Cut. This game starts off with promise and a really cool cutscene and outstanding music, but fortunately the rest of the game did not keep the excitement going. Raiden, the main character, has three ships to choose from which are slow, slower, and completely stop. The pace of the game feels like it's in slow motion and takes away from the kind of the fun, kinetic feel that the best shooters exhibit. There's also the story, told to you like through this Metal Gear Solid style monitor on the right side of the screen, like the whole game with people just incessantly yammering on about who knows what while I'm just trying to concentrate on pushing this flying turtle into second gear. The weapons are cool though. Dangan Feverun is another cave game remastered by M2 Shot Triggers. This one has a disco theme. It's weird, it's kind of ridiculous. I don't know, it's just kind of fun though. It's got all of the M2 goodness we've come to expect, like graphs on the side of the screen and easy mode. It's just a weird one, it's definitely a cult classic, but I can't deny the fun of the disco.
Battle Garaga Revision 2016 is a remastered version of the arcade classic brought to PS4 by M2 Shot Triggers. The game features seemingly straightforward vertical bullet hell gameplay with a twist. The game uses a rank system to judge how well you're doing, how many power-ups you're collecting, and how often you use your bombs to adjust the difficulty of the game on the fly. The beauty of this is the player must constantly make decisions on what power-ups to pick up and when to balance how powerful our ship is with how hard the game is getting. M2 added a graph on the screen for the 2016 version so you can monitor your rank as you play. There are four aircraft to choose from at the outset with four more available if the code is entered. Each ship has its own identity with varying shot patterns, speed, and bomb types. You can even modify your ship further by simply using a different shot button to select it at the start screen. Graphically, the game still holds up with hulking multi-tiered bosses, beautiful backgrounds, and plenty of cool looking enemies. Cinemora EX, man, this is a cool looking game. It has sort of a steampunk look with bright colors, beautiful backgrounds, and the way it plays with time is kind of wild. Instead of your ship having a life bar, you have a countdown timer. Any hit you take takes time off the clock, but killing enemies and certain power-ups can add time to it. If you run out of time, you die. You can also slow down time to help avoid waves of bullets that are crashing down on you. The thing is that the main mode is a very drawn out story mode featuring very depressed furries out for revenge for some extremely graphic crimes. It's a huge downer and frankly not told very well. It can be hard to keep track of what's going on, who's talking, even whose ship you're flying. The game will slow down for long, long sections of time to let the furries talk about all the awful shit that's happening to them and the players just left to wait till the shooting starts again. It's frankly no fun. There is an arcade mode included as well, but the levels were clearly built with the story mode in mind, so they just feel slow and strangely paced. I don't like this one, but hey, you might. I don't know what you're into. You be you. Hitsui Destiny. I don't know if it's supposed to be Destiny or Destiny, but I'm going to say Destiny because Destiny is cooler. Here we go, another M2 Shot Triggers release of a classic cave arcade bullet hell game. Kitsui is regarded by many enthusiasts to be cave's best game, if not the best shooter. It's also considered to be one of the hardest, with a scoring system that rewards very aggressive play. Luckily for us, M2 has added a super easy mode and a destiny mode that relaxes the difficulty. Sadly, this one has not gotten an English translation, so we're back to using Google Translate to navigate menus. It's worth the trouble, though. Kitsui Destiny is a blast for players of all skill levels and deep enough to keep you trying to master it for years. Skyforce Anniversary is a slick looking shooter with a twist. Instead of leveling up your ship during a level, you do it in between levels by spending currency you collect from your previously alive enemies. Frankly, it's a slow process that forces you to play the first levels repeatedly over and over again to save currency for faster main guns, options, and other basic upgrades. Stuff that you would have gotten in the first couple of minutes of a more standard arcade shooter. I bounced off of this one pretty quick because it just felt sort of slow and boring from the get-go. Uh, who knows though, maybe you'll like it, especially if you give it more time to unlock the cool stuff. R-Type Final 2 is probably the best looking game on this list with its modern made for PS4 graphics, but it's also my least favorite. The game is very deliberately paced and frankly, my attention wanders leading me to make dumb mistakes. It also sends you back to a checkpoint when you die and takes all your weapons away. This can lead to a situation where the game becomes very difficult to progress through and just feels overly punitive. 
It also leads to level designs that need to have kind of these slow spots near checkpoints so a player can respawn there and not get overwhelmed. This one's not for me, but if you like your shooters a little more tactical, you may jive with it more. Ikaruga is another classic brought to modern consoles. Ikaruga features a polarity mechanic that allows you to switch your ship between black and white to match your enemy's bullets. When you're white, white bullets can't hurt you and vice versa. The game uses this mechanic to great effect and is extremely challenging. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. Let me know what struck your fancy in this video. Did any of these games kinda pique your interest in the shooter genre? And also, did I miss anything? Is there anything out there that I really have to try as a new shooter fan? Thanks for watching. Hit that like button if you liked the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.